there was that group in Seattle that took over that section of the city and the government refused to send, you know, to kick those people out. I don't know if you remember this a couple of years ago. And I'm going, wait a minute, why are we paying property taxes? I looked out my window and the garbage had just been picked up from the curb. And this was shortly after my driveway was plowed of snow, okay? Now, if an alien came down from another planet and we described, you know, that there's a property tax in the United States, you know, someone would probably believe, oh, all right, well, they're gonna like pick up your trash and like plow your driveway for you and everything for that property tax you pay. It's like, oh no, well, those are separate services that I pay pay. So, you know, I guess really what I'm getting at is maybe more philosophically in big picture, should there be a property tax? Well, that's, that's a big question, but yeah. let, let's do talk about what property tax funds. So property tax funds schools. Um, it's the primary funding mechanism of schools. If you it talk to funds, an old timer, they still call it school tax sometimes. Yeah. It, it funds schools. It funds fire departments. It funds the police. Okay. So those are the three big services that it funds. This is why, um, by the way, Keith, when uh, there was that group in Seattle that took over that section of the city and the government refused to send, you know, to kick those people out. I don't know if you remember this a couple of years ago. And I'm going, wait a minute, why are we paying property taxes? Because the police force and the fire department were being paid on by property taxes on the buildings that had been taken over by this renegade group. Wow. And so to me, the reason a business, so I pay, I have a commercial property. I pay a huge property tax on that commercial property. Okay. Doesn't house children. So I don't send children to school, but I still pay tax for education. Why? Because I need educated employees. So I'm happy to do that. I pay it for fire protection. I pay it for police protection. I think what the money is used for generally is fine. I don't have an issue with that. The challenge I have with the property tax is twofold. One is it is a true wealth tax. If your property goes up in value, you pay more tax. And it's a tax on inflation because if your right. property goes up in value because of inflation, you pay more tax. And then second of all, sell your property, but it's also a regressive tax. So people who have no more income, they're on fixed income, they're on social security, they have a pension plan, whatever, property tax, their property goes up because of inflation, not because it's a better property, but because of inflation and they're paying more tax, even though their income's not going up. And I think that's my biggest challenge with property tax. That's really a good point. I had never thought about it that way before, that property tax can be a regressive tax, therefore you pay a higher rate with a lower income, which is what a regressive tax means. I know that some jurisdictions try to help senior citizens out with that. Maybe they'll say like the first 100K of assessed property value is exempt. But yeah, on basis, you're you're right about that with it being a regressive tax. And you know, Tom, I kind of look around the landscape. We deal with a lot of markets and properties and providers nationwide here at GRE. And I seem to see a national effective property property tax rate of about 1%. You know, something like that's pretty common. 1% of value. You own a 500K property, you're going to pay about $5,000 in property tax. Of course, that varies substantially. New Jersey's a really high one. Um, so the states in the deep south are really low ones. But what are your thoughts about that 1% average national effective well, property about this. tax Let, rate? Let's say you bought that property for $50,000. Now, because of inflation, it's $500,000. Now it's really a 10%. It's 10% of what you bought it for. So it's not really 1% anymore. It's 1% of the price value. It's not 1% of what you paid for it. This is where, see California with Prop 13, they tapped their property tax, right? If you didn't move into a new property. I loved that proposition, frankly. I love Prop 13 because what it said was, look, if you're staying in the same home, your property tax isn't gonna go up because you get no more value out of it than you did when you bought it. So why are you getting more tax even though you're not getting more value? That makes no sense. I'm not a big fan. You know, like Texas has a, they, they rely heavily on property tax. Remember, we have three types of taxes. We have an income tax, we have a transaction tax, which the biggest one is sales tax, but it's also excise taxes. And then we have property tax. And property tax and estate tax are the only two wealth taxes we have. And property tax is a true wealth tax. Why can we have a, a property tax in our hometown, but we can't have a federal property tax? Because the constitution doesn't allow a federal property tax. But our state constitution probably does allow 
a state property tax. And so property taxes are really interesting. I talk about it in Tax Free Wealth. Tax Free Wealth has a chapter on sales and property tax. And uh, I will say it's my least favorite tax because again, A, it's regressive and B, it's a tax on something I've never realized the benefit, uh, the only benefit I have is that I live in it, but that benefit's not gone up even though the property tax goes up. You brought up so many interesting things there. Sure, that proposition in California is what kept people staying in their homes for a very long time. But Tom, when we think about property tax and should there even be one as we ponder that big question, what do other nations do? Because a lot of times I know you look at foreign nations' tax policies. I think most localities, have, a lot of them have a, a local property tax. I don't think it's uncommon. What's interesting to me is that Missouri is looking at getting rid of their property tax and putting in a transaction tax instead. So in other words, you don't pay a tax for owning the property, you only pay a tax when you sell it. Well, that actually makes more sense. You know, in previous episode, we talked about more versus United States, right? Yeah. And we talked about that whole idea of a wealth tax and realized gain. Well, if you taxed, and, and some states do this already, California does this, um, Hawaii does this, Pennsylvania does this, where you have a tax when you sell the property, an excise tax when you sell the property or, or a transfer tax, if you will. That makes some sense because you did get the money. You actually have the ability to pay the tax. It's not coming out of your earnings. It come, came out of the sale of the property. So it's a tax on the sale. Frankly, if I had to choose, I would probably choose the transaction tax. I mean, I would choose to have very little tax. I think the government should, you know, I think we need fire, we need police. Those two things we absolutely need. We need roads. Uh, we should have taxes to pay for those. School. I'm more I'm a fan of school choice. And should we have property tax pay for those? Or is that something that we ought to pay for some other way? I don't know. There is some argument that again, that should be, maybe you had to pay that out of sales tax or a transaction tax. Yeah, I think I'm feeling your vibe on that one, Tom, that a transfer tax of real estate is somewhat more palatable than this ongoing property tax that you have to pay because a transfer tax probably is realizing a gain there along with that, even though we probably don't like that piled on top of ongoing property tax for sure. When we think about property taxes, you know, something that applies to every homeowner, whether they own income property or not, is the pretty well-known primary residence capital gains tax exemption. For quite a while, that's been 250K if you're single and 500K if you're married. Can you tell us more about that and where the direction of that's going? And is that adjusting with inflation or what are your thoughts? Yeah, it's, it's not adjusting for inflation, unfortunately. <laughs> There, it's interesting. Some things adjust for inflation, some things don't. Tax brackets adjust. Uh, the exclusion for your primary residence doesn't. And your deduction for miles driven for charity doesn't adjust for inflation. But your deduction for miles driven for work does adjust for inflation. So it's very interesting to see what does Congress say we're going to adjust for for inflation and what, what they don't. That came into effect under Bill Clinton. Prior to Bill Clinton, prior to his presidency, you had to actually put your new house had to be worth more than your old house. It was m very much like a 1031 exchange, where as long as you bought a new house that was equal to or greater in price than the sales price of your old house, you paid no tax. But the minute you went down, so when, for example, you're retiring and you decide, well, I don't need all this house. My kids are gone. I'm going to go move into a, you know, a condo on the golf course, or, you know, I, I, I just don't need that much space then you had to pay tax. What uh, happened in the Clinton um, era was we actually got this exclusion, which is as long as you live in the house for two years, two out of the last five years, you get 100% exclusion on the gain up to 250, like you said, 250 single 500 um, joint. I would love to see them index that. I think it needs to be indexed. Uh, and frankly, they need to adjust it retroactively because too many people got caught in this last run up where they I saw a lot of people for the first time ever. I saw a lot of people paying tax on this on the gain from the sale of their house. Yeah, that's something that you hope that you don't have to do. We'll see if and when they do adjust that for inflation. You can watch this one next.